who is the day of the feast of St. Michael the Archangel, the Immaculate Union of St. Mary's. It's also the 16th Sunday of Pentecost with the Mass today of the Feast of St. Michael. And the, uh, the epistle for the September 29th, the Feast of St. Michael, is taken from the Book of Apocalypse, Chapter 1. In those days, God signified the things which must shortly come to pass, sending by his angel to his servant John, who hath given testimony to the word of God, and the testimony of Jesus Christ, what things soever he hath seen. Blessed is he that readeth and heareth the words of this prophecy, and keepeth those things which are written in it. For the time is at hand. John of the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him that is, and that was, and that is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, who hath loved us and washed us from our from our sins in his blood, in his own blood. And then the gospel. Taking that according to St. Matthew chapter 18. At that time the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who thinkest thou is greater in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus, calling unto him a little child, set him in the midst of them, and said, Amen, I say to you, and they should be converted and become as little children, you should not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as his little child, he is the greater in the kingdom of heaven. And he that shall receive one as such little child in my name receiveth me. But he that shall scandalize one of these little ones that believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone should be hanged about his neck and that he should be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of scandals, for it must needs be that scandals come. But nevertheless, woe to that man by whom the scandal cometh. And if thy hand or thy foot scandalize thee, cut it off and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to go into life maimed or lame than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye scandalize thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee having one eye to enter into life than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. See that you despise not one of these little ones, for I say to you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. Mm -hmm. Father, Son, and the Ghost, Amen. So in the Feast of St. Michael, the greatest of the angels, a few considerations on the holy angels, the angels that we deal with every day from the time of the beginning when God created Adam and Eve. What happened? He walked every day with God, Adam and Eve did. And the angels were around them. An angel came named Lucifer, and the angel spoke to Eve, and she decided to listen to the angel. And there have always been, from the very beginning of time, the interaction between men and angels. Both the bad angels, whom we call the devils, and the good angels, who are standing in the face of God. Now that uh, St. Ambrose and St. Augustine tell us that there are billions and billions and billions of angels. And we know this because of the parable of the, of the, of the prodigal son, or not parable, of the lost sheep. That our Lord said in the parable of the lost sheep that there were 100 sheep. But which of you will not leave behind the 99 safe sheep in order to save the one that was lost? So 99 safe sheep represent all the numbers of angels. So there are 99 good angels for every one human being. And that's not 99 good angels for every one human being at any particular time, but all times. So right now there's 7 billion people on earth. And throughout time, maybe 20 billion people. And so for every one of these 20 billion people, there, there are 99 angels, good angels, for the, for the, for the, for the, that represent the numbers. So there are 99 more good angels than there are 20 billion. So, so, that, uh, so that there are trillions of angels. And also, we learn and later on in the book of the Minor Prophets that the angels fell from heaven. 
And the, one of the minor prophets, Jonas or O.C. Or, or, or Amos, tells us one-third of heaven fell. So we gave the, the math of it, one-third of heaven fell. One out of three angels followed Lucifer. Two out of three angels followed Michael. So the majority of the angels are in heaven, and we know that there are 99 that are in heaven for every one person on earth. A minority of angels are in hell. These are the devils. So there are about 50 devils for every one human being. So there are several trillion devils and more and twice that angels. And so there are many, many of the spirits that are intellectual spirits in the, in the heavens. There is a huge army following Lucifer and a huge army following Michael. And from the very beginning, there had been interaction between these and, 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 and human beings. We call them all by one name. We call them angels. The word angel means messenger. Because always the angels, no matter what their position is, messengers go to the king and they take a message and they bring it down to whoever needs to receive the message. They give the message to that person that needs to receive it and then they bring it back to their master. This is true of both the good angels and the bad angels. All of the wicked angels carry messages from Satan, Lucifer himself, to all souls on earth and then messages from the souls on earth back to Lucifer. And the other angels, the good angels, carry messages from heaven to earth and from earth to heaven. And there's a continual communication. There are nine choirs of angels. And there is an order amongst the angels. According to, it's not a dogma of the church, but according to a tradition, eight of the choirs have representatives in hell. All nine choirs have representatives in heaven. That there was one choir, the seraphim, and this is a choir that signifies love. The choir that is the, the choir of the angel of the angels that are seraphim. These are the angels that were below the cherubim originally. They were the second choir of angels. Now they are the first choir. And the seraphim, they are the angels that love. The cherubim are the angels that know. And the, the cherubim have the perfect knowledge of God, a greater knowledge of all God and his creation than anyone else and any other being. Whereas the seraphims are devoted only to love. They have a perfect love. So the cherubim help them send the knowledge down to the seraphim, and the seraphim immediately turn that knowledge into the fire of love. Of course, all the angels love God, but the seraphims are devoted to love, devoted to charity. And some of the saints tell us that of the seraphim, not one angel fell. Of all the other eight choirs, angels fell and became devils. But, but St. John tells us, Deus caritas est. God is charity. God is love. And those angels that were purely devoted to love in their being, not one fell. And this is the choir of the seraphim. Of the other eight choirs, the angels fell and became devils. So the seraphim then took their place, just as Michael was a lowly archangel. That's the eighth choir of the nine choirs. He's towards the bottom, not the very bottom, but very close to the bottom. And the archangels, the archangel Michael climbed above all the angels. He climbed above trillions of angels, billions and billions at least of angels. He climbed above them and took his place, but he came from the very bottom, or almost the bottom of the angels. And the seraphim then climbed above the cherubim because of their perfect love, and because the cherubim, Lucifer was a cherubim, and the seraphim, they did not fall. Now these angels are a part of our creation. We have an idea, for instance, hey, angels live in heaven, wherever that is, somewhere out there. Angels were not created in heaven. Angels were created here on this earth. Just like we, there are many creatures you don't see. If you could see all the insects in the woods, you would not go into the woods. The fact is that there are many, many creatures in the woods you don't see. There are many creatures that are there where they are acting, they are working, they are doing their work, keeping our world alive and keeping our world functioning, but we don't see them. There are millions and billions of creatures. You don't see all the rocks that are beneath you. You don't see the layers of strata. You don't see what's on the other side of the clouds on a cloudy day. You can't see the stars that are behind the sun. There's billions of stars behind the sun right now. You can't see them. These all show how valuable your eyeballs are and how valuable your senses are. They're pretty useless. And so when the angels, the angels they can see all that. They say the stars are there in the daytime just like in the night. Can't you see him? No, I can't see him. You idiot. <laughs> the fact is that the angels say, see all the realities that there are. And we, we, can, we can only see through our senses, though we're very often we see things with our senses today that I won't see tomorrow. 
There are things in our senses that we see, and there are things in our mind we see that we don't always see. This is part of the deficiency of us human beings. So I don't see Europe, but I saw it before. I know what it looks like. I don't see Kentucky right now, but I know what it looks like. I've been there. And so, <clears throat> so the fact is that I see many things, that I know about many things that I can't see at this very moment. But they are still there. They don't depend upon my eyes presently seeing them. Right now, there are trillions of angels, trillions of them, and they're busy. One thing all the angels have in common, they're not lazy, none of them, zero. No bad angel is lazy, no good angel is lazy. They always work. And St. Thomas Aquinas points out that the nature of an angel is such that he ha if he doesn't work, if an angel gets lazy, he ceases to exist. We can lay down and take a nap. But even when you take a nap, your, heart's, your heart is beating, your, your blood is flowing, you're having some kind of dream. There's still activity going on inside of you. But an angel is only mind and will. Therefore, he's always working. His mind is always working. His will is always working. And an angel is wherever he works. And he can go from work to work. So an angel can be immediately right here, working here in, the, in this in the St. Mary's, Kansas, and then instantly it can be working an instant later in Moscow, an instant later on the moon. Wherever he works, he's working. He is where he works, and he goes instantly from one place of work to another. And we see often in, in all kinds of ways the workings of the angels, both the good and the bad. We normally call the good angels angels, the bad angels devils. But we see, we see, working, we see them working continuously. The devil came and spoke to, to uh, Eve and convinced her to eat the forbidden fruit. He could not make her eat it. She had to eat it. He could not make her bring it to Adam. She had to bring it to Adam. He could not force Adam to consume it and disobey the law of God by a great sin of pride. He had to do it. But he encouraged and he moved and he worked. Now there are also physical works of the angels. One example, for instance, we see in the book of Maccabees. Judas Maccabeus was fighting against the enemies of God, fighting against, against, against the, the, uh, the Greeks. And he was fighting against them in a great battle. And he decided to charge forward. And he charged forward in the battle and by himself, and he was killing many of the enemy, and they surrounded him. And there became visible two angels. Two angels stood on either side of Judas Maccabeus. And Judas the hammer was killing the people in front of him. And the men were coming behind. The enemy soldiers were coming behind. And they were trying to stab Judas in the back. And an angel was there with a sword. And he knocked away the swords. And he knocked away the swords. They tried to shoot him with arrows. And they blocked the arrows. And not one arrow touched him. Not the one sword hit him. So the angels are working on us continuously. We know, for instance, at this very moment, there are trillions, at least billions, of devils. And the devils are all on assignment always. They don't take vacations. They don't take breaks. The devils are on assignment. There are billions of angels. And many angels who are called devils are on assignment right now here at our mass. They're here right now. And the angels are also here. And the devils want to pour forth every kind of inspiration. So we use the word spirit. The spirit refers to breath. Because the angel... The angel, he cannot directly act on our minds. He cannot directly act on our hearts. But he can blow like a wind. As I mentioned oftentimes, he can blow like a wind. A wind can blow in your face. Now, if it is the winter time and the wind is very cold, you will be tempted to turn your back to the wind. But the wind cannot make you turn your back. If it's the summertime, the wind is blowing in your face. Then the wind is cooling you, and you may turn your face to the wind. You may also turn your back to the wind. The wind encourages you to turn its face to the wind because it's hot. Or the wind encourages you to turn your back to the wind because it's cold. But the wind cannot make you turn your back, and the wind cannot make you turn the face. I and mean, this is the way the angels work upon our intellects and upon our wills. The angels inspire. The good angel breathes us with a warm wind, and the bad angel, the devil, breathes us with a cold wind. And we have to decide which wind are we going to respond to. Shall we keep our face toward the cold wind and continue to fight? Or shall we turn our back to the cold wind and move in the direction of the cold wind? Shall we turn our face towards the warm wind and go in the direction of the warm wind? The cold wind makes us go away from it. The warm wind wants us to go towards it. 
or the, or the wind that's in the warm time, the cool breeze of the summer and the, hot, and the, and the, the, the cold breeze of the winter. We will react differently to it. And so the devils and the angels are always blowing these winds. But they're also working with each other. They're also combating. They're working continuously. So that right now, for instance, the devils want to put every kind of wicked thought, every kind of wicked desire, every kind of evil maliciousness inside of us at every single moment. And one thing that we'll see on the day of judgment, when we look over our lives, we will see how the angels were busy, 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 and busy. And the good angels were working, 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 working. And so many times the devil tried to kill us. So many times the devil tried to put temptation in our way. So many times the devil did all kinds of wicked things in order to try to destroy us. And the good angels were there protecting and protecting and defending and defending. We say, for instance, about St. Michael, St. Michael the Archangel, what did he do in the very beginning? We do not know his original name. He was whatever original name he had as an angel. But then what happened was that at that God, the God said he was going to become man. Lucifer was scandalized by it. And he said, no God should lower himself to the level of a creature. That this is insane. God is God. The creatures are extremely low. He is demeaning himself. And he said, forget it. Lucifer said, forget it. And then Michael responded, who is like unto God? Mikael, who is like unto God? He responded, Mikael, who is like unto God? And when he responded to Mikael, then the other angel says, you're right, we don't question God. Therefore, they followed Lucifer, and there was a genuine war by which Lucifer, by which Lucifer was cast into hell by St. Michael and his angels. And he gathered them together, and he threw Lucifer and his cohort into the kingdom of hell. So there was a genuine combat that happened in heaven. And Lucifer was cast into hell. And the fires of hell were created. And hell became the place of the justice of God. The place of a torment for those that choose to violate the law of God. Do not believe his word. To live in, in sin. And the Lucifer and the fallen angels went by way of falling into hell. And hell was created on the first day. And there's a physical place of hell. And on the very first day God said he created the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth. All the angels work in the heavens, and they work on the level of the earth up to the heavens. But these angels were cast beneath, and they were cast into the center of the earth, where they were crushed together in the center of the earth, and it is called hell, the place underneath. So that hell is physically located 4,000 miles beneath our feet right now, in the very center of the earth. And the, so the devils were cast into that place on the very first day. God created the heavens and the earth, and he separated the light from the darkness. And so the devils were crushed backward, retreating from all directions, and crushed by the army of, of St. Michael into the very core of the earth. Now God allows them to come out in order to tempt men, but they don't reach the heavens. And hence we say God is in heaven above, and the devil is in hell beneath. And there's a physical hell beneath us, it's a real hell, and there's a physical heaven above us. And God the, God the Son, Jesus Christ, his body and blood and soul divinity is in the Blessed Sacrament on the tabernacle. We'll be on this altar in a little while. But his extended body, we see his unextended body, his extended body that is six feet tall and it's full extension, that body is in heaven. That same body is on earth, the tabernacles throughout the world. But the body is in heaven, up above. The souls in hell are down below. And the de devils are working continuously for our damnation. They are continually fighting, continually attacking. And they work together in coordination. They inspire on all levels. They inspire the leaders of governments. They inspire the individuals. And they're trying to push in a way to prepare a kingdom. They are preparing the world for the coming of the Antichrist. They are preparing souls that their hearts will be ready to accept him. They are preparing the laws. They are preparing all things in order that the Antichrist will be able to come and take his place as the ruler of the entire earth. They're laying the, the technological foundations to have a mark of the beast. You can't have a mark of the beast unless there's technology. You have a mark on your forehead or a mark on your hand that has to be able to read like a credit card in order to be able to buy and sell things. The technology has to be put in place. Many things have to be put in place. And the devils are inspiring. And the good angels are inspiring. And they are moving continuously. And then our Lord says in the gospel, what happens, what's one of the things that happens on the day of judgment? Woe to those that scandalize. What is scandal? To teach another how to sin. To lead another into sin. 
So when you consider a young innocent child, every one of them has an angel. And he says in the Gospel today, beware of scandalizing. Christ gives an exact example. Beware of scandalizing a little child. Because when you scandalize a little child, remember, he has an angel, and the angel is watching the face of God every day. That angel is going to show up on the day of judgment. We sometimes have this idea that on the day of judgment, when a soul dies in a state of mortal sin, the devil stands beside us because we have a guardian devil who is trying to guide us to hell and keeping track of all our sins. We also have a guardian angel who is trying to guide us to heaven. And when a soul dies in a state of mortal sin, we have this idea. We have an idea that the guardian devil is there saying, I've got a record of all the sins. And the guardian angel is there saying, well, I'm trying to defend against the guardian devil. And, he did, and I'm trying to show something, but I've got no defense. I'm sorry, I've got no defense. I'm sorry, I've got no defense. I'm sorry, I've got no defense. Every time we see angels, we never hear them say, I'm sorry. Every time we see angels, they are shown in their true power. When the holy angels stood before David, rather before Daniel, and the holy angel stood before St. John the, the, the Evangelist, who is the beloved of Christ. St. John, who lived three and a half years with Christ, three and a half years of God-made man, who put his head on the heart of Jesus Christ, and who had love deeply in his heart, filled with God, but 100% innocent. An angel stood in front of him, and he cowered in fear. He collapsed in terror because of the presence of the power of an angel. The angel had to give him strength to bear his presence. The same was done with Daniel. The angel to give him strength to bear his presence. When the soul dies in a state of mortal sin, the devil will point out all the sins of the man that died and how he is unrepentant. The good angels will come, and many good angels will come. For instance, the angels of every person that we have scandalized, Every person that we have committed sin with, every person that we have led to damnation, and this is many today, because now you must remember with regard to the, the internet, with regard to these pictures of pornography and so on, the girls involved with pornography, and the girls involved with impure dress, every angel of every single young man, everyone that was tempted to commit a sin because of those pictures, at the day of judgment, every single one of those angels is showing up. Every one of them. There will be thousands of angels at the judgment. Every single good angel will show up. They will all be there. And that, our Lord gives a warning in the gospel today. He says, beware when you, woe to him that scandalizes this little one. Woe to him that teaches the little one sin. Woe to one who exposes this child to impurity. Woe to, woe to one who destroys the soul of a young child. And that does not mean young child only in, 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 in days but young in virtue, one who is innocent, and whatever day the time comes when innocence is taken from them, every angel takes note. And the notice is made that such and such a man has died, one who has seduced many thousands of women. Such and such a girl has died. And it's one who through her impur impurity, through her immodesty, through her lust, has destroyed thousands of men. Every one of the angels is showing up. And they will all be there at the judgment. And they will not be, I'm sorry, I can't defend this young lady. I'm sorry, I can't. They will not be sorry at all. They will be filled with an exceeding great wrath. And they will they, they, will, they try to get us to repent in life. But when the time of judgment comes, the time of repentance is over. And therefore, on the one side, there shall be the devils who shall point out every sin of the, of the man that dies in mortal sin. And will point out his wickedness and point out his lack of sorrow and will mock. On the other side shall be the good angels who will point out with greater viciousness than the devil. Consider this about hell. Does the greater pain come from the pitchfork of Lucifer? Or does the greater pain come from the breath of God? It says in sacred scripture, the breath of the Lord is a torrent of fire upon the damned. Just as he has infinite mercy here on earth, he has infinite justice in, in hell. And this infinite justice burns, and the good angels will have only two moments in which they can get at us. Because when we're in hell, the good angels cannot touch us. 
But when the time of judgment comes, the good angels will be there. And they will absolutely, with great anger and great violence, they shall condemn. Now remember that Jesus Christ doesn't care what the devil has to say. He hates the devil. He condemned the devil. He has no very, he bears no value in the witness of the devil. Even though the devil will tell the truth at the day of judgment. That will be the one day he tells the truth. But Christ is not interested in Satan. Christ is not interested in Satan. But there shall be the thousands of good angels. And there will be thousands of them. Because our sins affect thousands. Not only our guardian angel. He will be there. Will he be happy? Absolutely not. Will he be silent? Absolutely not. He will be filled with great wrath, a just and holy wrath. And God shall ask, just like we see when you see when a, when, a, when a king has a subject who committed a crime. A man comes in who is an honest subject. Did he commit the crime? I know that you tell the truth. If he's innocent, tell me, and I will believe you. If he is guilty, tell me, and I will believe you. And so Jesus Christ in the day of judgment stands before us and we have seen our own sins, and the good angels are just, and the good angels are honest, and the good angels are filled with the fire of the justice of God. It was the good angel that killed the 40,000 soldiers of Sennacherib. It was the good angel that killed the firstborn of Egypt. It is the, and also the, 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 the saints tell us that St. Michael, he will be the specific angel who will come down at the end of the world to kill the Antichrist upon Mount Olivet. The Antichrist will be in Israel, he will be upon Mount Olivet, he will probably be trying to imitate and mock the resurrection of Christ. And God will say, enough, or the ascension of Christ. And he will send down Mikael, and Mikael with great power will kill the Antichrist. Remember, the Antichrist will not be killed by men. He will be killed by the angels. He will not die by a human hand. And St. Michael will be the one who will come down and kill him. The angels also carry our prayers. They carry our prayers up to heaven. The prayers have to travel from our weak bodies to heaven, and they carry the prayers, and they bring them up to heaven. They are defending us against the continuous attacks of the devil. They are killing themselves, so to speak, protecting us, and that is why when the time of judgment comes, and if we die in mortal sin, they will point out, I did all this for this young man. I did everything for him. I did everything for her. I gave them every opportunity to turn away from their impurity, every opportunity to turn away from their lies, every opportunity to come to the truth, and they rejected it and rejected it and rejected it, and here are all the rejections. Lucifer the today is telling the truth. The Satan today is telling the truth. I objected everything Satan said during life, but on this day of judgment, no objections. Satan tells the truth. This man has done all this wickedness. He has not repented. And furthermore, at least to Lucifer is blinded by his own evil. He cannot see how evil it was. But I see how evil it was. Lucifer wants to torture him with pitchforks. He wants to torture him with his own means of torture. He must suffer more than that. There will be a great anger when the soul dies in mortal sin because of the good angels. And when the soul dies in justice, the angels shall be the ones who cover up our sins. They will be the ones who make sure that the sins are forgotten. They will be the ones that carry us before God. And remember the power of prayer. Remember Tobias, the elder, he rose up and he went over to, to bury the dead. And the angels took note and sent the message to heaven. And then Tobias prayed and wept because his wife mocked him. And the angels carried his prayer immediately before God. And then God sent the angel Raphael down to take care of Tobias. Because remember that the angels are always with us. And that we will see at the end of the world. How there are more good angels than bad. And the good angels so far outnumber the bad. And they are so much more powerful than the bad. That we will not be able to say we were outnumbered. We're not outnumbered. Two good angels for every one bad angel. And the good angels are here right now working. They are all working. And God has given us every single means to combat <laughs> Satan. We have to have confidence in the power of God, the power of the faith, and the power of the good angels to protect us. So long as we remain faithful to the true faith and faithful to our life of virtue, and we have to call upon the angels to help us. They will help us in our battles. Speak to your guardian angel and talk to the angels. Also, some saints tell us that when each, there is an angel for every one of your duties. So that when you get married, you get another angel to protect you in marriage and to help you be faithful to the duties of marriage. 
The young man becomes a priest. Another angel shows up on the day of his ordination, or several angels, in order to protect him specifically in his priesthood, so that we not only have one guardian angel given to us for our whole days, but there's an angel also added to that angel to help us in our duties of state. So we may have multiple guardian angels, each according to our different positions. And the guardian angels working together. And the angels discuss, and the angels, the angels work in heaven, work out our, our, what, is, what is necessary for our salvation. They even argue amongst themselves. We read in the sacred scripture how the angel of Babylon argued against, God, against Michael. Because the Jews were in Babylon, and he didn't want the Jews to go back to Israel, because as long as they were in Babylon, Babylon was being blessed by the presence of the true religion. It was being blessed. Therefore, we argued before him. Michael said, no, they spent 70 years here. They spent plenty of time here in this, in, this, in, in, in this time of Babylon. Time for them to return. And Michael argued before God, time for them to return. Their 70 years are finished. It's now time for them to return. So the angels discuss with one another about our salvation. They discuss about the way that God's will is going to be worked within us. And they are constantly carrying messages, constantly fighting, constantly defending, and the enemy is constantly attacking. And we were always, always, at every moment, defended by the many good angels. And so it's a confidence in God who gives us always more than we need to be able to save our souls. And let us, be, let us have confidence in God and call upon our angels to help us. We'll close that. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.